Welcome to the Christian Perspective Channel, a place for people to learn the Word of God, the Bible. I have no affiliation with any organization in this world. My affiliation is with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who guides all believers into all truth. If you want a fearless, truth-seeking Bible study with no agenda other than learning the truth of God's Word, then this is the place for you. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. Now that we have covered the topic of Izu and Edom in episode 15, we can get back to our studies in Genesis. Before we carry on with the life of Jacob, who is now renamed Israel, we need to understand some more about Israel, who Israel is. And in order to understand who Israel is, we need to understand who Ephraim is. Ephraim is the son of Joseph. And if we, want, if we want to understand who Ephraim is, then first we need to understand who Joseph is. Now that brings us right back to the book of Genesis. There are two sons of Israel, or Jacob, whom we must take a look at before we can move on with our study of Israel. And that is Joseph and Judah. Uh, first, we're going to deal with Joseph. To recap from episode 14, Jacob, the family man, Rachel, Joseph's mother, had to wait a long time before she could become Jacob's wife. Because as you remember, um, Jacob worked for Rachel f for, from her father. He worked for seven years in order to marry Rachel. But the father tricked him, and he ended up marrying her older sister, Leah. So then he worked another seven years for Rachel. But then God um, opened Leah's womb and closed Rachel's womb. So Rachel had to wait a very long time before she had even one son with Jacob. And her first son with Jacob was Joseph, which means, let him add. And she said, uh, God has taken away my reproach, and he will add to me another son. And then when they were on their way home back to Jacob's father, Isaac, Jacob stopped at Bethel, where he made the vow to God, and God renamed him Israel. And shortly after that was when Rachel died in childbirth at Bethlehem, giving birth to the second son from her, who she named Benoni, which means son of my sorrow, but his father renamed him Benjamin, son of my right hand. So the two sons from Rachel were Joseph and Benjamin. So that is where we left off in, in episode 14. So now we're going to jump ahead to Genesis chapter 35, verse 21. Reuben, the oldest son of Jacob, had sex with Bilhah, Jacob's concubine, who was Rachel's maid. And she was the mother of Dan and Naphtali. And Israel heard of it. Uh, somebody told him. And so that happened. And then the next thing that happened begins in Genesis chapter 37. Joseph was 17 years old and he was feeding the flock with his brothers the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, the two concubines. Uh, Zilpah was the mother of Gad and Asher. 
And Joseph brought a report to their father of their evil. Uh, it doesn't say what it was, but uh, they did something bad, and Joseph told their father. Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other children, uh, because he was the child of his old age, and Jacob made him a coat of many colors. They saw that he was loved more than they were, and they began to hate Joseph. Now, Joseph is symbolic of Christ in many ways, and also the kingdom of Christ. His life is extremely prophetic, and I'm just giving you a heads up to this, and I'll point it out as we go along, so that we can try to understand what Joseph represents. And he had two sons. His two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim, represent the Christian nations as we will prove later on. Um, we will breeze through this episode pretty much about Joseph, but we will revisit Joseph many times as we talk about other parts of the Bible. Uh, Ephraim and Manasseh also represent the ten tribes of Israel. Uh, the northern kingdom of Israel was also referred to as Ephraim, in by the prophets because Ephraim was the strongest the largest and the most powerful of the ten tribes so the kingdom just became known as Ephraim to uh, some of the major prophets and this is also represented in the life of Joseph this comes back again to the layering of prophecy the four most important names to understand in understanding Old Testament prophecy is Jacob, Israel, Judah, and Ephraim. These are four reoccurring themes that are very important to understand. We saw some of these names when we were looking at the Old Testament prophecies about Edom in episode 15. But we just didn't look at it then. But we can revisit that later and understand it a lot better when we understand who these people represent. The book of Genesis is like a table of contents to the Bible. And it's the, the lives of the patriarchs are very prophetic. And it's very important to understand how they fit into the big picture because God in later prophecy, uses them as symbolic figures. And their lives were extremely symbolic, and, and it plays out in a greater context in their children. This is a, a, a recurring theme in the Bible. Joseph is all about dreams and dream interpretation. Dream and prophecy are very symbolic. It's like another language. And when you learn these symbols and what a lot of them mean, it's, the, it's a language that God uses in prophecy and in dreams. God is the giver of dreams. Um, oftentimes, if it's a very personal dream, the symbol may be overridden by some personal thing that you understand yourself. But in, otherwise, it's a symbol that can be understood by looking at prophecy. Now, Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told his brothers about it. He said, we were all in the field binding sheaves, and my sheaf stood up, and your sheaves all bowed to my sheaf. And they all got angry at him, and they said, Shall we all bow to you? And then he had another dream, and he told it to his father and his brothers. He said, The sun and the moon and eleven stars all bowed to me. And his father said, Shall I and your mother and your brothers all bow to you? 
And his brothers began to hate him, but his father began to think about these dreams and wonder. Now Joseph's brothers, his older brothers, are all gone off to Shechem. Remember, Jacob had bought land in Shechem. So they went off to Shechem to feed the flocks or to graze the flocks of sheep. And Jacob was staying in Hebron at the time. And he sent Joseph to go and check on the brothers to make sure they were okay. When he got to Shechem, they weren't there. And he found out from somebody that they were in Dothan, which is a city near Shechem. And Dothan appears to be a trading city. It was uh, because there were trading uh, caravans coming and going through Dothan. Um, it was a Canaanite city. And I suppose the brothers weren't supposed to be there. And they were there. Who knows what they were doing in the city when they were supposed to be out feeding the flocks in the fields. And when they saw Joseph coming, they said, here comes that dreamer. Let's see what will happen of his dreams. And Reuben said, let's not kill him. Just throw him into a hole and then we'll talk about it. And Reuben was planning on coming back later and rescuing him and bringing him home to his father because Reuben was the oldest son and he was the one who would be most held responsible for if anything happened to Joseph. So they took his coat of many colors and they threw him down into a, a hole and they sat down to eat. And Judah said, what profit is it for us if we kill him? Why don't we sell him to some Ishmaelite traders and that way we make some money and we won't have blood on our hands. So they agreed that that was a good idea. And I guess they made a plan even deeper. They sold him to some Midianites and the Midianites sold him to the Ishmaelites. So we see even in these days, the Ishmaelites were slave traders. Midianites were sons of Abraham also. They uh, remember after Abraham, um, at the end of his life, after his wife Sarah died, he married another woman named Keturah, and he had six more sons with her. Midian was one of those sons. So the Midianites were the sons of Midian. So they bought Joseph and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. We learned about Abraham and Keturah in episode 8. Now these events are, are somewhere around 2000 BC to 1900 BC or so. Uh, right about the end of the Isin dynasty in Mesopotamia and maybe somewhere near the beginning or the height of the 12th dynasty in Egypt. So we see uh, the trading going through the land of Canaan was active at that time. And there was Midianites and Ishmaelites trading and I suppose Dotham was a, uh, a, a trade hub of some kind. Now I guess when they uh, sold him and when all this transpired, Reuben must have been out with the sheep. Because he came back later and Joseph was gone. And then he went to his brothers and said, he's gone, what should we do? And he was worried. And they took his coat of many colors and they slayed a goat and they dipped the coat in the goat's blood. And then they brought the coat to their father. And they said, we found Joseph's coat. And their father assumed that he had been torn by a wild beast. And his father rent his clothes and, and, and mourned for him. 
His sons and his daughters tried to comfort him, but he would not be comforted. He said, I will go down to the grave mourning for my son. In Egypt, a man named Potiphar, who was the captain of the Pharaoh's guard, he bought Joseph from the Ishmaelites. Now, as we covered in episode 11, Egypt, the Middle Kingdom, a prime candidate for the Pharaoh that Joseph met was Sennusirit the third, because I guess uh, according to historians, Sennusirit the third built a summer palace at Avaris. Avaris was renamed Pi Ramses, and that is the city where in the land of Goshen of Egypt where the Israelites lived. And there uh, was some archaeology done there, and they actually found the settlements and the, the layout of the palace, the summer palace of Sennusrit III, and uh, they found a right in the same area another smaller palace which seemed to be uh, occupied by uh, by Canaanite people or, or, or Semitic tribes from the land of Canaan and from the Sinai desert uh, that they figure this was the Israelites. And they even claim to have found a pyramid-shaped grave uh, with the body missing and a statue of a person with a coat of many colors. So uh, I'll post a video of this archaeology uh, in the description. It's quite interesting. So uh, Sinusrud is a, maybe about a hundred years or 50 years later than uh, what it should be. But when we're talking about these times, 50 years is not far off. Um, most of the dates that we're talking about are, are estimates at best. So it may be Sinusrit the third, but we don't know for sure. When Potiphar was Joseph's master, God blessed Joseph in everything he did. And Potiphar saw this and realized that he was so good at everything, he made him the master over his house. And Joseph had access to everything and was a ruler over all the other slaves, over everything except Potiphar and his wife. But Potiphar's wife, when her husband wasn't around, she was also always after Joseph. She wanted to have sex with him, but Joseph always refused. And one day she caught Joseph and grabbed him by his coat, his cloak, and she wouldn't let go. And Joseph took off running and she, she le and, and he left his cloak in her hands. And she then accused Joseph of trying to rape her. I guess it was her explanation for what was she doing with his cloak. And then Potiphar got angry and put Joseph in prison. And he ended up being in the prison where the prisoners of the king were kept. And when Joseph was in the prison, he also was blessed by God in there. And the guard of the prison uh, saw that Joseph was so good at everything he did that Joseph became like the lead hand in the prison also. Now beginning in Genesis chapter 40, after some time, the chief butler and the chief baker of Pharaoh uh, were thrown into prison. And Joseph saw them one morning and they were sad and he asked them, why are you sad? And they said, because we've had a dream and we don't understand what our dreams mean. And Joseph said, dreams interpretations belong to God. 
Tell me what your dreams were, and I'll tell you what they mean. So the chief butler said, A vine grew up before me, and it had three branches with beautiful grapes. And I had the pharaoh's cup in my hand. And I squeezed the grapes into the cup, and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand. And Joseph said, The three branches mean three days. Within three days, you will be restored to your position, and you will again put Pharaoh's cup into his hand. And Joseph said to the butler, When you are back with Pharaoh, remember me and tell him about me because I was stolen from the land of my father, and even here I didn't do anything to be put into prison. And then the baker thought, well, that sounded okay, so I'll tell you what my dream was. And the baker said, I had three white baskets on my head, and the top basket was full of all kinds of baking for Pharaoh, and the birds came and ate it all. And Joseph said, Within three days, your fer the pharaoh will lift your head from off your body, and he will hang you on a tree, and the birds will eat your flesh from your body. Now, on the third day, it was the pharaoh's birthday. And I guess as part of the celebrations, he revisited the people in prison. And the chief butler was restored to his position, and the baker was hanged on a tree and, and beheaded, and the birds ate his body, just like Joseph had said. But the butler forgot all about Joseph and didn't say anything to Pharaoh. Now, in this story so far of Joseph, he was falsely accused and thrown into prison, where he judged the dreams of the baker and the butler. This is symbolic of Jesus Christ, who was falsely accused, and he ended up judging the living and the dead. And the three-day symbolism is in this also, with Christ being dead for three days. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing.